Hello dear friends, this is Ewell Humphreys. I'm glad to be here and share with you another word from the Bible. And I pray it will be a word in due season for you. I, I hope so. I praise God that these little messages are going out all over the world. And may the Lord bless them. Amen and Amen. I want to speak to you on the subject of deacons and widows. <laughs> this is a rather unusual subject, but I think it might be good for some of you who are listening on what the Bible says about deacons in the church and widows. The Bible says in Acts, the sixth chapter, and in those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, there was a murmuring among the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected. Then the twelve called the multitude together and said, Look out from among you seven men of good report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may put over this business of helping the widows and serving tables, so that we can give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And so these twelve were, were, the, were pastors of the churches and that were con meeting together in this area, and <clears throat> there was a there was some criticism brought about because they were not taking care of the widows, and the widows were suffering, and so they said, "Well, we'll appoint some deacons," and they appointed seven deacons. That don't mean that every church ought to have seven, but according to the need in that area at that time, seven were was sufficient, and so they were appointed deacons to help the widows. And so we need to see something about the deacons. The word deacon means servant. I may be talking to a deacon right now. The word servant, the word deacon is servant. You, you, it doesn't mean that you have great authority in the church. It means that you're to be the servant of those in the church. And that's something that we need to recognize. And that's true with all of us. That we're all servants of the Lord. The Bible says over in Matthew 20, Jesus said that... that uh, that uh, there was a, a lady that came to, uh, no, it was Matthew uh, 20, and the lady, yes, the mother of Zebedee came to Jesus and said, uh, I want to ask you if you will let my one son, my son, sit on your right hand and the other on your left. And Jesus said, That's not mine to give, but uh, I will. Uh, uh, that will be given them in that time. And then Jesus turned to the to his uh, disciples. And he said unto them, You know the princes of the Gentiles, they have dominion over, over people, and they that are great exercise authority over them. But it not, shall not be so with you. For, for whosoever will be great among you, let him be your servant. And who will be chief among you, let him be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And so we see the importance of servant being a, a servanthood for a deacon. And so, dear deacons, you are called of God to be a servant to your church and to your people. Called of God to be the kind of servant that will bless others. And a deacon is, is blessed. Over in the First Timothy in the third chapter, it said, They that have chosen and have been chosen the office of a deacon will purchase to themselves a good report and a degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. And so the deacon has a special blessing from God in his church. We believe that, that, that another officer of the church is the pastor of the church. But here the deacons were set up to help the pastor and to support the pastor so that he would have more time for the ministry of the Word of God and prayer and his spiritual values. And so it is important that we see the importance of, of deacons that were, that were doing their work in the church. I thank God for good deacons. I remember, well, let me just tell you this little testimony. I, years ago, when I was pastoring my first church, and uh, I was pastoring, and, and uh, I needed to paint. And we had just bought a little house, my wife and I, and I needed to paint the eaves of the house and the back porch and so forth. And so I got my paint, and I started painting it. It took me two or three days to paint that house. And then I finally got through. Well, the next week or two weeks later when we had our deacons meeting, well, I said then to the deacons, Now, <clears throat> if you have anything to say before we close, then let's hear it from you. And one deacon spoke up and said, Well, I'll tell you what. 
he said, I've, I've, I've driven by where Brother Humphreys lives, and he said, I've seen him out painting his house. And he said, he's been painting on that house for three or four days. He said, you know, I think he ought to be out here on a church field working, and on doing the work of the church instead of painting his house. <laughs> and one other deacon, Brother Royce Jackson, I'll never forget him. <laughs> he spoke up and said, I think you're right. But he said, what we should have done is we deacons should have gone over there and painted that house for him. <laughs> that dear man, that other man, never did say any more about me painting the house. Good deacons, though, are to support and protect the pastor as much as they can. But more than that, they're to serve the Lord God in their own way as best they can as they seek the Lord's will and wait for their life. And now, God bless you deacons. And then we see in 1 Timothy 5 a word to did, uh, to, for with us. Honor uh, the widows. Honor the widows. We need to honor the widow. The woman that's lost her husband. Lost her time of, of, of fellowship with her companion. Lost her, uh, the person that was a breadwinner for their home. And she's lost one that makes grave and important decisions in that home. And she's a widow. She needs comfort. She needs help. She needs instruction. She needs someone to care. And the church is supposed to care for her. And the deacons are appointed also to care for her. And so it's important over in the book of, uh, of, uh, of again in the book of First Timothy in the fifth chapter it says something about with us what they ought to be doing. It says and now the widow that is widow indeed trusts in God and continues in prayer night and day. And so, dear widows, I know I'm talking to some widows right now. I want to tell you that you need to, to spend time in prayer, night and day. Talk to prayer. Talk to God in prayer. And commit yourself, continue in supplications, and trusting in the Lord your God. Trust in God. He'll never leave you. Trust in the Lord Jesus. He said, I'm with you even to the end. And He'll be there when you need Him. You're never alone because the Lord's with you. And he has become your husband. He's become your bridegroom. He is yours. And so that's a good thing. And then to all of us, to all of us, the Bible says in James, the second chapter, and uh, verse 27, it says, uh, Pure religion and undefiled before God is this, that <clears throat> to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So here's, a, here's something that we all need to do, and that is that we need to seek the will and the will of God in everything we do. We need to seek His way, His will, because this is so important that we do that. Hallelujah. We need to do it because this is God's way of telling us what we need to do, and so serve the Lord. We all have a part to play, all of us. It's important, deacons, widows, all of us. We all have a part to play. And in the church, that's true. Everybody in the church has a part to play. It's kind of like a, a man directing an orchestra. And he's, he was directing, this happened, he was directing this symphony orchestra they were, they were going to play that night in the great auditorium. And there they were, the drums were rolling and the bugles were blaring and they were playing that music and all the stuff. He stopped them. <clears throat> and he said, where's my piccolo? <laughs> The piccolo is a little instrument about this long, and you play it, it sounds like a bird chirping. And But his trained ear, his trained ear, listen, he didn't hear the piccolo. Where's my piccolo? Maybe you feel like you're just a piccolo in a great orchestra of God. Well, if you are, I want you to know God listens for you. You're important to Him, and you're important to the overall cascade of music. And so, praise God, I want you to give yourself to the Lord and let him have his way in your life. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, pray this brief prayer with me and ask Jesus to come into your heart. Oh, trust the Lord. Pray a prayer like this. Say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. I believe he's coming back. Come in my heart and help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Oh, praise God. Pray a prayer like that. And you will live forever. And you will fit into the great category of God's great picture of what he wants to see. May the Lord bless you, my dear friends. May he bless you deacons and widows. And may he bless all of us. That we can all work together for the glory of God. 
In the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen.